TikToker who criticized police misconduct being harassed. Charlotte Carter is the name, racial justice advocate who has compiled data revealing clear cut racial profiling by her local police. Her TikTok sharing this info has led to what she believes is a campaign of intimidation. In a now viral TikTok posted Sunday, she was even pulled over by an officer, Scott, who she just so happened to mention in a prior TikTok of specifically preying on black and brown folks. Look at him, okay? Carter told the Daily Beast Scott followed her for two to three miles before stopping her for allegedly illegally turning right on red. So Mr. Scott, you pull over over 80% black people. I've I went through all of your tickets for six months. <clears throat> and when there's a population of only 20% white people, I mean, of black people, only 20% of the population in Chesterfield is black. <clears throat> I don't know how you manage to ticket over 80% minorities. And I, I did a TikTok about it. I know that you know what I'm talking about because all y'all know about my TikToks. So <clears throat> that's okay. I'm not on TikTok, so I know I don't. <laughs> oh, and then someone even commented said, I'm pretty sure S. Scott is a state trooper. I said, well, whoever it is, he's gung ho because I only had to go back six months with you. In the past six months, you had ticketed, from when I did this about a month or two ago, you had ticketed 250 people um, that in Chesterfield that had gone to Chesterfield Court. And the person that I did in comparison to you had ticketed 240 people in an entire year. But you, I only had to go back six months, so you sure do write a lot of tickets, but. You can take your pen, that's yours. <clears throat> There's your ID and your copy, okay? That's Start funny. Safety, <laughs> that is funny. Boy, he's on it. He's really, he's a real zealous officer there, okay? Ernie right on red, Charlotte Carter pulled over. How did she start monitoring police misconduct? Well, here's the backstory. Carter, who is Iranian American, claimed police in Virginia first turned their attention to her in the spring of 2022 after she started questioning an alleged child abuse case that involved her son's biracial friend. She said she noticed the child was bruised and severely underweight. So as a nurse, she was obligated to report the situation. But she believes the local police were slow to act, did not take the child's welfare seriously because his father is black. So she kept following up on the case. She said, I'm not gonna drop it. While police eventually arrested someone in the matter, Carter said she felt like they didn't take it seriously until she posted a TikTok about alleged abuse in March. Video has received nearly 5 million views. After that, Carter said, Chesterfield police suddenly began popping up everywhere in her life. There, there they go, the ones over there. I ended up trying to file for emergency custody, but the police began falsely arresting me. Hmm, that's strange. In April, police arrested her for trespassing on her own property. They also added on three additional charges for contributing to the delinquency of a minor for each one of my three children because I encourage them to trespass into our home. She's starting them young, advocacy. Since she began repeatedly criticizing the police on her TikTok, Carter telling the Daily Beast she has been stopped by the police about 10 times. Most recent being the incredibly fortuitous stop she filmed involving Officer Scott. She's created a GoFundMe to help finance her legal cost. Uh, why don't we pause there and let you weigh in here. Now since 2022, she starts this TikTok Rivana, and then 10 times, I guess it could be a coincidence, but I thought you know, there weren't enough police. They were, they were saying we need more police. We don't have enough police to get all the work done. They apparently have plenty, plenty on the force to target this woman, or perhaps she keeps turning right on red. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot of people trying to defend the police bias by saying, you know, why would they target this woman? Why would they waste their time doing that? But it's a PR problem for them. So why wouldn't they try to silence her? And not to mention the fact that the police have access 
to databases that would include her license plate number and her vehicle registration. So they would be mm. alerted to what her vehicle looks like. They're familiar with her, they know what she looks like. And she's been a problem for them and, and they're trying to, to get her to shut up and stop pointing out their uh, their issues, whether it was you know covering up for the abuse of the child that she was advocating for, or whether it's you know disproportionately ticketing black people in that county and pulling them over more often, despite them making up a significantly smaller percent of the population than white people in that county. You know they they don't want to have that reflecting back on them, so it's a lot easier to try to get this one woman who has you know relentlessly been advocating for the people of that county against the police to be quiet than it is to you know make some sort of coordinated PR campaign or actually do the work of investigating the officers for racial biases. Yeah, and it always it always gets me because they're so sensitive. It seems like police are so sensitive. We've covered on this program for fans of indisputable no. Uh, Dr. Ritchie has brought them story after story of just a bystander whipping out a phone and starting to record an interaction that they don't agree with or they want to memorialize and suddenly the police turn their focus on that person. Case in point in this incident, Chesterfield County Police Chief Jeffrey Katz would solidify this TikToker's theory when she was the less than subtle subject of an April Facebook post he wrote. Who's this woman? No, she's nothing. Why are you writing a Facebook post about her, right? Uh huh. He attempted to paint Carter as someone wanting attention by trying to defame the department over the child abuse case. Quote, I don't want to give this person additional notoriety, but here I go giving her additional notoriety. But I won't stand by passively while someone sits behind a keyboard and attempts to disparage the work our people do to keep the children in our community safe. Okay, chief. Meanwhile, in October, eight news Richmond reported most drivers pulled over in Virginia are, well, this is stunning. <laughs> this is breaking news, black or Latino who are overrepresented. According to the Chesterfield County 2020 census, 67% of the town's population is white, 25% black, 10% identified as Latino. That from the Daily Beast. When 8 News reported on the issue in October, Katz, who is also the president of the Virginia Association of Chiefs of Police, claimed racial profiling was not a factor in the department's traffic stops. Rather than addressing the statistics, he said, there is a great disproportionality of black and Hispanic drivers who die behind the wheel in Virginia. Chief, you can be proud of. Katz's prior history, let's get into that. Before moving to Chesterfield, was the chief of police in Boynton Beach, Florida. 2017, four Boynton Beach police officers were federally charged for beating an unarmed black man. Miami Times reported spurring allegations of racism within the force that led local leaders to call for Katz's termination. And isn't that how it goes, Ravana? They never seem to go away. The bad apples, which is a total crock. I mean, can I get, can I just get, two or three good apples that I can munch on here. When it comes to the police, they seem to just pop up. What was that game, whack-a-mole? Is it, do I have the right game? And then they are over here and you can't go fast enough to get them out of here. They want to be officers so bad and apparently they have nothing else that they can do except police the rest of us. Yeah, and I think that that statement they made was very revealing because he said that we're not doing racial profiling, but Black and Latino drivers tend to die behind the wheel more often in Virginia, which almost is an indication that you are doing racial profiling mm-hmm. based off of that statistic. Not too bright. Yeah, and the um, Facebook post he made about the woman is also quite revealing because it shows that he is fearful of accountability. That he's trying to demonize this woman because he's afraid of what she might reveal about the racial profiling that is actually going on in the county. Uh, but I mean, it's it's. Not just him, of course. This is this is why we see police officers retaliate against, like you mentioned, people holding up their cell phones and recording them. They are in a position of power that they enjoy being in. They like the idea that they are better than the people that they're supposed to serve and protect. When in reality, they're just trying to serve and protect themselves. So when they see those people trying to hold them accountable, it outrages them and mm-hmm. they they fight back in sometimes illegal and egregious ma- uh, manners. 
it's incredible. it's incredible.